What is wrong with the world? You only have to look at the news or open your social media and you're just inundated with bad news. War in Ukraine, shootings in Texas, racism, antagonism, people angry over everything. Masked, unmasked, vaccinated, unvaccinated, liberal, conservative. What is wrong with the world? Years ago, people had an opinion about human history. It was an optimistic view that things were just getting better and better and better, and eventually we'd achieve some kind of perfection in this life. Uh, unfortunately, the 20th century happened. World War I, World War II. More people have been killed in conflicts in the last 100 years than in any other period in human history. So the idea that things are getting better and better kind of went out the window. So we traded the optimistic view for a pessimistic view that things are getting worse and worse and worse. And if you, like I said at the beginning, follow what's been happening over the last couple of weeks, it's hard to argue with that. There's a couple of things we need to know, though. Number one, this is normal. You see, we're not inherently good people with a few bad apples thrown in. We're inherently evil people. Genesis, way back at the beginning, in chapter 6, verses 5 to 6, says that the Lord saw how bad the people on earth were and that everything they thought and planned was evil. He was sorry he had made them. God was grieved then, and he's grieved today. Each one of us is capable of grieving God. Jesus reminds us of this in Matthew chapter 5, 21-22 in the New Testament. You know our ancestors were told, do not murder, and a murderer must be brought to trial. But I promise you that if you're angry with someone, if you will have to stand trial, if you call someone a fool, you will be taken to court. And if you say that someone is worthless, you will be in danger of the fires of hell. So, what are we to do? Are we all to climb into our collective handbasket and wait out the ride to its inevitable end? Reminds me, I saw a bumper sticker some years ago and it said, Hey, where are we going? And why are we all in this handbasket? You know, we can throw our hands up in the air and say it's too much, it's too big. There's no way that we can make any change and we'll just place our hands between our knees and wait it out. Or, we can repent. It's an old-fashioned word, repent. It, it means to turn around. To stop going in the direction you were going, and to turn around and go in the opposite direction. To repent of our share in the attitudes that ultimately lead to all of this chaos. Anger, bitterness, jealousy contention, prejudice, self-centeredness, the list goes on and on. We should throw up our hands, but not to resign ourselves that things can never change, but to recognize and admit our powerlessness to change and throw ourselves on the grace of the one who can change everything. You know, there's good news here. Just a little bit later on in Matthew, we read this. Matthew 24, verses 3 to 7. Later, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him in private and asked, When will all this happen? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? Jesus answered, Don't let anyone fool you. Many will come and claim to be me. They will say they're the Messiah, and they will fool many people. You will soon hear about wars and threats of wars, but don't be afraid. These things have to happen first, but it isn't the end. Nations and kingdoms will go to war against each other. People will starve, and in some places there will be earthquakes. But this is just the beginning. Signs of the beginning of the end. But things are not going to go this way forever. For Jesus goes on to say in verse 30 that the Son of Man will appear in the sky. He 
will come on the clouds of heaven with great power and great glory. At the sound of a loud trumpet, he will send his angels to bring his chosen ones together from all over the earth. You see, we serve a king who is our savior. He not only forgives us of the garbage in our lives, but he delivers us from the garbage. He's our healer. He will set things right in our lives, spiritually, emotionally, physically. He's our baptizer in the Holy Spirit. He will give us the power to not only be victorious, but to be agents of change in this world. And he is our soon coming king. He is coming, returning for his own, to set things right. Rejoice. Give pause. The question isn't whether Jesus can make a difference or not, but whether you will let him make a difference in your life or not. The world is not going to go along like this forever. You see, I'm a pessimistic optimist. Things will get worse and worse. And then Jesus comes back. And he'll set everything right. And you and I can get a taste of that today when we let him set things right in our lives. When we let him be our savior, our healer, our baptizer, and our soon coming.